Well, good morning, ladies. Good morning to all of you who are watching. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it is good. It is good to be in this building this morning. Um, I have to. I have to confess. Last week, when I was supposed to stand, and at the end of service, when Pastor said, uh, "KB and, and Pastor Tim, uh, we're going we're not gonna do Sunday school," I must admit I wasn't terribly disappointed because I wasn't real sure how I was gonna be able to stand up here after being back in this building for the first time and praise team doing what they did last week. Uh, so I am I am grateful to be in the building. It is a uh, it is a blessing just just to be here. So um, and always grateful to be able to stand and and share what God has given me with with you all, my sisters and and God's daughters. So uh, let us go ahead, uh, ladies. You should have the uh, the handout. Uh, it's the same one that was emailed to you on last week, uh, and I believe it is likely posted also in our uh, in our group on Facebook in our women's ministry group. Um, so again, it is the same lesson, uh, nothing new for this week. Uh, and just a quick reminder, ladies, uh, those of you, the handout for the men's Sunday school class was emailed to you. Uh, so some of our men did not have access to their email. So if you got that, if you would um, quickly print that out and make sure your spouses have that uh, for their class as well, we would certainly appreciate it. Um, let's go ahead and, and go to God in prayer, and then we will get started with our lesson for today. Dear God, how we, we thank you, God. We thank you, God, just for another opportunity to say thank you, God. We thank you for waking us this morning. We thank you for bringing us to this place, God, and we thank you for everything that has already transpired uh, here on this morning, God. So we come right now asking for you to, uh, to be in the midst once again, for you to be with us as we share uh, with your women, your daughters, God, uh, another another lesson, God, to help us to grow, to help us to be transformed uh, into the women that you would have us to be, God, um, not just to to hear another word, God, not just to, to sit here and, and listen again and, and not just to take notes, God, but to be transformed uh, so that our lives will be changed, our lives will be different, God, so when we leave here, we are not the same um, so that we can also help someone else live the life that you have called us to, God. So we thank you. I ask, God, that you... Um, Calm me now, God, even in this moment, I ask that you please bring back uh, the things that you and I have talked about this past week, God, and uh, just allow it to be clear and plain again so that you most importantly are glorified, God, and that your women are changed. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Amen. Um, will you have your handouts, ladies? And again, we are uh, going to be talking about winning the war against worry. Um, and I, I think if we, um, if I were to poll uh, everyone in the building, and if I were to poll everyone who's listening this morning, whether you are on your cell phone or your iPad or however you are listening to us this morning, I am fairly certain of one thing, and that is that all of us would agree that we are experiencing some challenging times. Um, I, I, I talk to people. Uh, almost on a daily basis, who are struggling to make sense of life right now. They are struggling to make sense of where they are in the situation that we find ourselves in. And so um, many of them are doing absolutely everything they can, quite frankly, to keep things under control when right <laughs> underneath the surface, yeah. Yeah. just underneath the surface, they're about to fall apart. Yeah. Um, and, and for many, the seat of that unraveling, if you will, is the culprit of worry. Um, so some of us, if, if we're honest, we would even say that given everything that's happening in our city, everything that's happening in our country, everything that's happening around the world, many of us would say that there's reason to worry. Um, we have family members and friends and coworkers, people who we love who are battling sickness and disease and there's nothing that we can do uh, to help them. We have parents who are having to decide 
how to take care of and care for their children uh, in, a, in the midst of a world that seems more and more unsafe by the day while all at the same time still trying to figure out how they're going to provide for them and provide for their basic needs. We have folks who have lost jobs, unemployment has run out, um, bank accounts are depleted. So there's plenty of things that we would say there is reason for us to worry. And the list could go on and on and on. And if I didn't hit the thing that you are worried about, just know that it could be put on the list as well. And so it, it seems, like I said, that, that there is every reason for us to be worried. There's every reason to understand the anxiety, that, that there's reason to understand why some of us are living in a perpetual state of anxiety. But I want to challenge us this morning. I want to challenge that notion this morning as we look at a familiar passage of scripture. I want to challenge the notion that there's reason for us to worry and that it's okay for us to worry and that we should just continue worrying. I want to challenge that and we want to walk through this scripture and hopefully when we leave this place, those of us who are here in this building, those of you who are watching on your devices, when you turn it off, hopefully when we are finished today, we will have a clear picture as to how we can win the war against worry. Because if we look in God's word, he has told us, do not worry. So we're going to look at, like I said, a familiar passage uh, in Matthew chapter 6, beginning at verse 25. We're going to go to verse 34. I'm going to read all of it. Um, and I have to say, this is actually one of my favorite passages of scripture. Um, so beginning in, again, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25, it reads as follows. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So when we get to... Uh, chapter 6 of, of the book of Matthew, what's going on here, Jesus is in the middle of his first discourse, his first teaching that actually started back in chapter 5 with the Sermon on the Mount. And so in chapter 5, he begins with the Beatitudes, and he begins teaching, and he teaches on divorce, he teaches on adultery, he teaches on um, how we are to treat one another all through chapter 5. When we get to chapter 6, he begins talking about doing the things that are, that are good, that are going to please God. And so in verse 5, he starts, he teaches us what we know as the model prayer, or sometimes we refer to it as the Lord's Prayer. In verse 16 of chapter 6, he begins teaching us about fasting. Uh, and then beginning in verse 19 of chapter 6, he starts talking about laying up treasures in heaven and not here on earth. And then finally, when we get to verse 25 of chapter 6, he says, therefore, do not worry. And when you read this section that we just went through, he says three times in those nine verses, he says three times, therefore, do not worry. 
That word worry appears six times in those nine verses. And so we're, we're reading this and, and we're saying, Jesus, I hear you. But after everything that I just rattled off that's going on in our world, everything that I just rattled off that we're dealing with, Jesus, I, I hear what you're saying. I read what I'm, I'm reading it. But how can I not worry when all of that is going on? I'm, I'm, I'm reading it. I'm trying. I'm trying to I believe your word, but I'm struggling to make sense of you telling me not to worry when I'm looking over here at everything that I'm dealing with. And so here's, 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 here's how, how we have to do it, ladies. The first thing that we have to understand is, is that worrying accomplishes absolutely nothing. Worrying accomplishes nothing. So we, we've, we've always been taught, those of us, particularly those of us who are members of the Good Shepherd Missionary Baptist Church at 7818 Bonaire Street, we have been taught that whenever we see therefore in scripture, we have to back up to see what therefore is therefore, okay? So, so when we do that and we see in verse 25 where it says, therefore do not worry, that therefore in verse 25 is connected to Jesus' previous teachings in verses 19 through 24. And so that, that's, the, that's where he's focusing this therefore. And what he's talking about in that section is he's talking about money and possessions and treasures here on, on earth and placing our treasures here, placing our treasures in heaven versus on earth. And that familiar passage that we hear often that, excuse me, that familiar passage about serving God versus mammon, serving God versus money, that's, that's what this therefore is connected to. And so what, what Jesus is saying to us is that when he gets to this therefore in verse 25, after he said, you need to put your treasures in heaven, yeah. not here on earth, because you, you can't serve God and, and, and money. In other words, something's got to give. You, you, you can't do both. And so when, he, when we get, gets to verse 25, he's saying, if, you, if your priorities are in order, you don't have to worry. If your priority is in order, meaning you are focusing on serving God and focus on the kingdom of heaven, you really don't have to worry because your heavenly father is going to provide whatever it is that you need to be taken care of. So that's, that's the first thing we see. And that, that, that connection when we, when we see that, therefore, do not worry. So here's the first thing we want to look at. On your outline, it says, worry is a senseless act, meaning it don't make sense. So in verse 25, he says, therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and body more than clothing? Verse 26, look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Here it is. Yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? How, how many times have you been driving or you at the drive through or you stop to get some gas and you see a bird coming and fly down in front of you or next to you and he's nibbling on a hamburger that somebody either dropped or threw away and he flies on off? How, how many times have you seen a bird fly down to a puddle of rainwater, get his fill, and then go on about his business? How, how, how many times have you looked in your backyard, like I do sometimes, and you see birds out there just having a good time, and you're thinking, what are, what are they doing? They're getting some worms, and then they fly on to do whatever they do during the day. At, at no time do you see them running around in circles or they come pecking on your window asking you, do you have something for me to eat? They're just out and about being birds, doing what birds do. So, so if what Jesus is saying is if God has provided for the bird, whether it's a hamburger that I dropped, a piece of donut, some leftover rainwater, if God is providing for the birds... Are, 
you 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 don't realize that you are of more value than a bird. And so here's yet yeah, we we need food to sustain life. Jesus is not saying don't think about eating. That's not what he's saying. He's saying don't worry about it. Because he and so he's challenging us and he's in this he's challenging the disciples and those that he's teaching and so then by by default he's challenging us in this moment in relation to what we think God thinks about us. So if we go all the way back to the beginning in Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 where it says God created man in his image. Keep, keep in mind, the question is, are you not of more value than they, meaning the birds? God created you in his image. He didn't create the bird in his image, but he's still feeding the bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ephesians 2 and 10, again, one of my favorite passages of scripture says, we are his workmanship, his masterpiece. In other words, his, his very best work. That's, that's who we are to God. It don't say that about the bird, but he's still providing for the bird. Psalm, Psalm 8. Listen, y'all. Psalm 8 says in verse 4, starting at verse 4, he says, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him. For you have made him a little lower than angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him, listen, y'all, to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field. Here it is, verse 8. The birds of the air and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the seas, O oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth, ladies, Jesus is saying, do you not know who you are to God? Do, do, do you not know who you are to God? If he takes care of and provides for that little bird, will he not take care of you, his child? Those of us who have children, y'all know, there, there is not, I can't think of anything that I wouldn't do for Brianna and Michael. I can't, I can't fathom anything that I wouldn't, if I know that they have a need. I can't think of not providing for, because they are my children. They, they are mine, they are my responsibility and I love them with everything in me. So if I know that they have a need, I cannot think of anything that I wouldn't do to help provide and take care of them because they are my children. Grown as they are, they are still mine. So God is saying, you are my daughter. I created you in my image. I'm taking care of this little chichi bird. You don't think I'm going to take care of you? That's, what, that's the challenge that Jesus is placing in front of his disciples and by default that he's placing in front of us. And so when we know our worth in God, we recognize that it, it makes no sense to worry because God, our father, our daddy has everything that we need. Why am I fretting about there's not enough food in the pantry. Why am I fretting about there's not enough in the refrigerator? Because Pastor truly says it all the time. Is it really that there's nothing in the refrigerator? Or is it that it's just not what I want in the refrigerator? So if it's an issue of it's just not what I want, well, that means God has provided. It's just that I'm being selfish and pretentious, and that ain't what I want right now. But that doesn't change the fact that God is providing. It makes no sense. Look at, look at verse 28. He says, so why are you worried about your clothes? Why, why are you worried about clothing? And I like this because he, he throws out this question, and then he gives a comparison, and then he challenges us. He throws out this question, and he gives a comparison. And it's like, okay, so, so what's wrong with you? What, what's really going on? So he says, why are you worried about clothing? He says, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. 
they neither toil nor spin. Here it is in verse 29. And yet, I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, here it is again, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith. Again, he's telling us, just look outside. Yes. Just, just look outside at the grass. Yes. There are lilies. There are flowers. Yes. There's green grass yes. growing. Look, just, yes. just look out there. God is, God is, is, is growing his landscape. Yes. And Jesus uses this comparison of God allowing the grass to grow and clothing the grass with lilies to help us understand, okay, if, if he hooks them up with some beautiful lilies that today are going to be here, but tomorrow they may or may not. Again, you his daughter, you his child, do you not think that he's going to provide for you? Jesus is saying... Even when you, when we talk about, and he uses that, that comparison, when he talks about Solomon in all his glory. Solomon, y'all do know, Solomon had so much gold that, that we really can't even calculate it. When we think about the beauty and the splendor that was around Solomon in his kingdom. And so he's comparing, that, he's comparing the way that God takes care of and clothes the grass with lilies to all the gold that Solomon had. And so, again, if he spends that much time on the grass that is alive today, but tomorrow may be gone, don't you think he will take care of what you need? So, again, yes, we, we need clothes for, for our body. But, again, is the question that we have no clothes or is the question that I just don't have what Sienna has, and so that's really my struggle, right. and I'm thinking that God has not provided because he hasn't given me what Sienna has, right. but, but it's something in my closet. Right. Pastor yeah. says it all the time. Yeah. Technically, we really only need one pair of shoes. All right. All right. So those of us who struggle with um, thinking we need multiple pairs of shoes, yeah. even though we only have one set of feet, um, <laughs> we... We just have to, you know, just have to take that hit. But, but is the issue that I'm, I'm worried because I have no clothes? Or is it I'm worried because I don't have the clothes that Lena has and I want what Lena got? But God is saying, and what Jesus is saying here is, if God is going to provide, see, the issue is providing what I need and not what I want. If he gives me what I want, that's just extra. That's, that's just the beauty of his grace. But him giving me what I need is what I have to focus on. And so, again, Jesus uses that. Again, he uses that comparison. If, if he hooks up the grass. Yeah, I, I love, like, beautiful, cut, fresh, green grass. And, and I happen to like flowers. I can't grow them. I kill them all the time. But, but I like to see it. And so the point is, it, if God is going to do that for the grass... If he's going to clothe the grass with some beautiful lilies, he, you, you don't think he, he can take care of what you need. Worry is senseless. So, so that's why we don't worry. E even when we look at the account and it seems like there's no money to provide for what we need. Worry is sense because God still knows what we need. And, and, and sometimes it don't make sense, but it does, the reason it doesn't make sense to us because we're trying to make it make sense in our fleshly, human, yeah. carnal mind yeah. when God is saying, what I'm doing with you and for you and to you and through you ain't got nothing to do with your fleshly self. This is a spiritual thing, yeah. so you got to look at it a little bit differently. Even though it looked like it's nothing there, I'm the one who can take absolutely oh, something and make it out of nothing, yeah. and you trying to yeah. figure out what I did. Worry is senseless, ladies. But here's the thing. It's not only senseless, it's a waste of time. Back up to verse 27. He says, 
Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? Mm -hmm. The Message Bible says it like this. Has anyone by fussing in front of the mirror ever gotten taller by so much as an inch? In other words, you worrying ain't going to change nothing. It's, it's just not. It's going to give you a headache. It's going to run your blood pressure up. It's probably going to have you walking around talking crazy to people. It's probably going to have you mad. It's going to have you driving fast, a road race. So it's going to have you it's going to have you doing everything but what God would want you to do. It's going to have you demonstrating your flesh versus allowing the spirit of God to lead you. That's that's what worry will do. But it's a waste of time. He says he's saying worry is not going to get you anywhere. It's not going to add anything to your life, nothing positive to your life. If anything, it's going to detract from your life because all of that stuff you got going on is going to make you feel worse. So, listen, y'all, I, I, I see people all the time. I see people all the time. I, I, I meet with people. I counsel people all the time who are consumed with worry and anxiety about things that they can not change. They can't. <laughs> There's nothing they can do about it because here, here's the reason why. God is in charge. I don't care what it is. God is in charge. God is in control. He is the only one capable of changing whatever situation we are in. The person that's gotten on our nerves, the thing that is happening, the pandemic that we are in the midst of, God is in control. And he is the only one that can move the situation. So Jesus is saying to us, you worry, but you, you can't add, you can't do nothing about it. Why are you worrying? It is a waste of time. It is an absolute waste of time. And so I know it, it might be somebody who, who's watching right now. You saying, Catherine, I hear what you're saying. I hear you. And I'm reading what you're telling me to read right now. But you don't know what I'm feeling. You, you, you don't know what I'm facing right now. You don't, you don't know what I'm going through. And you are absolutely right. I, I may not know, but see, here's what you have to understand. Whether I know or not does not change the fact that God's word to us this morning still says, do not worry. That's what his word says. Favorite, another, another favorite passage of scripture. We, we quote it all the time, y'all. Philippians 4. Verse 6 through 7, Paul, Paul is saying the same thing that Jesus said, be anxious. In other words, don't worry about nothing. That means no thing. <coughs> don't worry about nothing. But in everything, with prayer and supplication, make your request known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses your all your under you can't even figure out why you walking around and you just you just smiling. They sang a song this morning. Just you just happy and you don't even know why. Cause all this crazy that's going on around you and all the things that <clears throat> that you could be worried about that people say you should be worried about, but the peace that you have because you read God's word that said, Don't worry, but I need you to pray. And when you do that, I'm gonna give you a peace. And you just walking around smiling. And going on about your day and how you doing this morning, girl, and how was your week this week? But they know what you got going on in your life and they think, what? Y'all, she she all right? What's why she smiling like that? She y'all, y'all might need to check on. Her. She all right? She all right? She she doing just fine because she's doing what God's word told her to do. She's not worrying. <clears throat> so so stop wasting time. Stop, stop wasting time on stuff that we can't change, ladies. I'm not saying that it's not bad. I'm not saying that it's not difficult. I'm not saying that it don't make you cry. I'm not saying that it don't hurt. I'm saying stop worrying about it. <clears throat> Allow God to be God and do what God does. Your part is to pray. Your part is to tell him about it. 
Your part is to read his word. Your part is to meditate like the preacher said this morning. Your part is to live your life, even though it hurts, to live your life in such a way that when somebody looks at you, they just confused as to why you just walking around skipping and happy because God's peace is inside of me. Moving on, ladies, on our, on our handout, <clears throat> Roman number two says worry can be defeated. In other words, we don't, we don't have to worry. We don't, when, when, it, when it creeps up and we start, we start feeling that thing, for me, my chest starts getting tight. When, when my chest starts getting tight and my ears get hot, I know, I know something's going on. So I don't have to give in to that. Worry can be defeated, and here's how. Look at verse 31. He says it again. Therefore. Now, now you see that therefore is hooked up to what he just told us in verse 28 about the lilies and the grass. So he just said, if he if he hooking up the grass with the lilies, don't and don't you think he's gonna clothe you? So 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 since he's gonna do that, therefore, do not worry. Saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? Here it is. For all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Letter A says, trust God's omniscience. Listen, y'all. God knows everything. Absolutely, positively everything. There is not one thing that he does not know. There is not one thing that surprises him. There is not one thing that catches him off guard. Nothing at all. So you've got to trust that since he knows everything, he's got you. You've got to trust that since he knows absolutely everything that has happened, everything that is happening, and everything that's going to happen, he has got you. Marcia told us a couple of weeks ago that lesson when we were shouting on the, on the conference call line. She said, just trust God. It really is that simple. We've got, she said it a couple of weeks ago. And I'm just going to piggyback and say it again this week. We've got to stop worrying and trust God's omniscience. Trust that God knows what is going on. He ain't forgot about you. You may think he has because he's not moving in the time that you want him to. He ain't forgot. He knows exactly what's going on. So <clears throat> this is what it says. The scripture says your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. He knows you need a job. He, he, he's, not, he's not asleep. <laughs> he, he knows that the account is at negative. <clears throat> he, he, he knows. He knows that the people are calling, asking for their money. He knows that you're trying to figure out, do I buy school clothes? Do I not buy school clothes? Are they going to school? Or are they staying home and doing school in their pajamas? He knows. He knows that the car is clicking it, clacking it all the way down the street. He knows. He knows that your loved one is in the hospital and sick and you can't get in and it's about to drive you crazy. But he, he knows. You've got to trust that because he knows, he has got you because you are his child. Listen, y'all, Psalm 139 verse 4 says, even, listen to this, even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. Before you even say what you need, he knows that you need it. He already knows, ladies, so trust that God knows what you need, trust that God knows where you are and that he is able, he is capable of supplying whatever that thing is because he's God and he has absolutely, not only does he know everything, but he's got everything. So if he's got everything and he knows you need something, he's going to make sure that you get what you need. But here's the thing, he's going to do it in his time. It's not going to happen in our time. And many times, that's our struggle. That's, when, that's, that's the struggle with the worries. Like, God, okay, um, 
Now, Lord, you know, the people say about the 15th, and uh, it's the 14th, and hey, what we going to do? Get, get, he, he, know, he know it's the 14th, and he know that the next day going to be the he, he knows. God, uh, God now, <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know these people. They saying the kids going to school. They saying they're not going to school. They, Lord, I, don't, I don't know what to do. Do I send them, God? Do I keep them at home? But if I keep them at home, how, I, how am I going to go to work? Because I got to go to work, and I can't take up. He, he knows, but he's going to answer, and he's going to provide in his time. Not in our time. So while you are waiting on his answer, you've got to trust that he is moving and that he is working. And so you just keep walking and believing and doing everything that you need to do to live according to his word, to his will, and to his way. And trust that he knows. <clears throat> Here, here's, here's the next thing, ladies, to help us defeat worry. <clears throat> he says, after he says, for your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. Then he says in verse 33, but, but, but. I like when it's buts in the Bible, y'all, because it always, it, it, that it, it's always a good thing after the but. <clears throat> he says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Listen, when we talk about um, God's kingdom, what we are talking about is his sovereign rule in heaven happening here on earth All right. and happening in and through us as believers. All right. So when we talk about seeking his kingdom, yeah, yeah. It's, it is when we are trying to ex ensure that we are exemplifying his righteousness yeah. here on earth. Yeah. The righteousness that we received as a free gift when we put our faith and trust in God. So doing what is right according to what God says is right, not according to what I think is right. So we serve God by serving his people. We seek his kingdom when we serve him, when we serve his people. We serve God, we seek his kingdom when we obey his commands, when we do, the preacher just said this morning, do what's in the book. Re read the book. But then do what's in the book. Yeah. Read the book, but do what the books say do. Yeah. So, so that is how when we talk about seeking his kingdom and his righteousness, listen, our priority has got to be to embrace and folk. We got to have a singular focus of mind that our goal is going to be to serve God and to seek his kingdom and not let all of this stuff out here distract us from doing that because that's what worry does. Worry will pull you away from seeking God's kingdom. Colossians 3 and verse 2 says it this way. It says, set your mind on the things that are above, not on the things that are on earth. Jesus, he is not minimizing the fact that we need these basic necessities. But what he's teaching us is to move them from the top of our list to the back burner and put God and the things of God and his kingdom at the top of our list. Make that the priority because God knows that we need them. Set your heart on the things of God, ladies. And then finally, if we are going to win this war against worry, it's a lot going on, ladies. It's a, it's a lot going on. There, there are women in here right now. All kinds of stuff going on. Those of you who are listening, who are watching myself, there, there, it's, there, there's so much happening in our world. But if we're going to win, because we can win, here's the last thing we got to do. Live one day at a time. Verse 34 says, therefore, again, again, therefore, do not worry. He said it three times in these nine verses. Therefore, do not worry. So, so that, therefore, is connected to what we just read. Since you're seeking his kingdom and his righteousness, and you, so now you know, all this stuff is going to be added to you, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow is going to worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is his own trouble. Listen, ladies, since God knows what you need, and since he's going to add the stuff that you need to you when you seek him first, mm -hmm. stop worrying about tomorrow. Uh -huh. 
Live today. Seek God's kingdom today. Serve God today. Don't, don't waste time thinking about what you're not going to have tomorrow and you miss everything that God has provided for you today. Because there, there are blessings that God has granted you today. There are gifts that he has given you today. There, there is beauty all around you today. I don't care how dark it seems, there is light around you today. There, I don't care how, what the doctor is saying, there is life still in you today. So don't worry about tomorrow because the more time you spend focusing on what God has done for you today, Pat said it a few weeks ago, the less time you have to worry about what's going to happen tomorrow because when you think about what he's done for you today, you get caught up thanking him for what he's done for you today. You get caught up praising him for what he's done today. They said it this morning. Hallelujah. You get, you get caught up praising him so you forget about what you think you're not going to have tomorrow if you just stay in today. So you win the war against worry. Live today. Focus on today. Because here's the thing. You might not even make it to tomorrow. And what a shame it would be to waste today. And then not be here tomorrow. You just wasted today worrying about tomorrow. And you might not even wake up tomorrow. But there's life today. There's reason to give God praise today. There's reason to say, Lord, I love you today. There's reason to say, Lord, I thank you today. Even though it's some stuff out there that I want to worry about, Lord, I can thank you today. James says it clearly. <laughs> he says, come now, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. That's what James said. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Ladies, we don't have to look far to realize it, it really is a vapor. So don't waste time today worrying about tomorrow. Live for today. And if by chance, by his grace, he decides to wake you up again tomorrow. He knows what you need tomorrow. Because tomorrow's going to be the today. And he is more than capable of providing whatever it is, ladies. Whatever it is. Don't worry, ladies. I know, I know, I know, I know it's a lot happening. I know we're dealing with a lot. I know it's a lot of struggles. I know it's hard. I know it hurts. I know it, I know it makes you cry. Don't worry, ladies. <clears throat> Let's do less worrying and more trusting. Because worry is senseless. It's a waste of time. But we can defeat it. <clears throat> if we trust God's omniscience, if we set our hearts on the things of God, and if we live one day at a time. Father, how we thank you, God, for this day. We thank you, God, for reminding us in your word not to worry, God. We thank you, God, for keeping us, keeping our minds, God, even when we want to worry, God. We thank you, God, for your word on today. God, please help us when we leave this place not to forget what you've told us, God. Help us, God, to hold on to your word. Help us not to worry, God, but to give it all to you. Help us to remember, God, it makes no sense. Because if you take care of the bird, you're going to take care of us. If you clothe the grass, you're going to take care of us, God. Touch each and every woman who is listening today, God. Touch those who are in this building on today, God. We love you, we thank you, and we praise you for absolutely everything that you have done, God. And we trust and we believe you for what you are going to do. It is in your dear son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and thank God. God bless you, ladies. God bless you.